back to the fire hall and our next speaker is Ilya Onishenko. Please welcome. You made it after the lunch, uh, so that's great that you're here. So uh, I'm representing a, a small, I wouldn't call it a studio because it's like basically me and my partner who is a programmer from Canada. Uh, but we sort of like have, have two games already. And uh, I think the most spectacular part is that they have not been released yet, but they already generate money. So I will tell you how it, how it can be so. And I will basically show you the tips uh, on actually developing a game and more precisely in how to basically build it. I mean, in terms of programming, if you don't know how to code like me. So the first uh, question out of, uh, I don't know, like 10 people who are in here, can uh, those of you who actually do not know how to code, can you raise hands? Okay, ladies, then this is for you. <laughs> Good. Uh, but I'm joking. I, I think uh, this, this I mean, at least this kind of coding, I mean, it's sort of like a garage coding, so it can be done, I mean, by anyone. And even if you know how to code, it's even better because you can use that tool because I will show you one uh, open source environment that I use for that, and it's even better. Okay, good. So um, just quickly to set expectations. So um, I will make an overview of uh, game development stages as a whole then showcase some tools that I use and uh, hopefully inspire you to do something. Uh, so we have like, I think one more session. So right after the conference ends, I expect you go and start kicking your keyboard. Uh, keyboard, sorry. So the first question is more like, you know, philosophical. So imagine you, you have won in a lottery one quadrazillion euros. What would you do, ask yourself, what would you do three months after, because I know what you will do first three months, like popping champagne and, and you know, all that. But what would you do when you, you get bored out of that, you know? So, okay, so you have the money, you don't have to go to work. Uh, you traveled like to million countries already. So what do you do? You get bored. So actually, so this just, you know, to find your aspiration to understand if actually creating a game is something that you should do. Because if your answer is, I don't know, maybe uh, flowering a garden, so wh wh why the hell are you here? I mean, maybe your passion is over there and you would be a fantastic gardener and you would just play games instead of like, you know, developing them. I have here my notes, so I will just open it here. Okay, uh, uh, because, you know, um, so, so basically I ask this question myself. So this, uh, this is me like two years ago. Uh, I'm so happy in here because I finally released my game. It's called uh, Iguana Kidnapping. Um, but to be honest, I'm, I was not really super happy because I was burned out on my previous job. Uh, I had like a 10 uh, years background in IT. At that very moment, I had almost no cash on my bank account. So, but I was happy that I, you know, finally released the game and I hoped that it would bring me the money. So what I did, um, I had... Um, the, the, we were in the middle of COVID uh, at that time. And I sort of like thought that, you know, the world would definitely change um, because uh, humanity will definitely uh, overcome COVID, but it would not overcome virtual online and remote mode because it's, you know, so efficient, so cost effective that we're going to live in it. So I thought that, okay, so this is a business opportunity. So, uh, and I thought, okay, I like, playing games, not only computer games, but, you know, overall, like Mafia and, and all that stuff. And I thought, okay, so um, people would need to play with each other, but in the middle of COVID, they cannot do it because they just cannot physically meet. So they, like, you know, use Zoom to, you know, have these drink, drinks uh, virtually with each other through camera, but, you know, you also uh, get bored out of it. So I thought, okay, uh, maybe I can do a game that they could play each other while in a lockdown, you know, so they can be each other, not physically, with each other, not physically, but together in this, um, in this virtual world. So I thought, okay, uh, why not uh, create that game? I started uh, researching what kind of games there are, which are the most engaging. Uh, I read a lot of literature and actually I like reading books. So I thought, okay, what kind of book uh, uh, is uh, the most, you know, um, engaging? And I understood that those are the detective books. Oh, by the way, so, I forgot uh, because uh, it's uh, a detective game. 
I will put my detective outfit, you know, sorry, I said that. Forgot about it. Okay, so, uh, and I decided to, why not develop a detective uh, computer game? I never did uh, gaming before. I never created any games. To be honest, uh, I don't really play a lot of computer games. And I never used in the computer game studio. So for me, it was like, you know, something completely new. But when I started creating the story, the plot, the characters, the setting, it was so super interesting for me that I understood that, okay, I don't want to watch Netflix anymore. I like doing this thing because, you know, it's so thrilling, inspiring. So that, like, you know, I don't work, like, until six. I work at, until I'm exhausted because I'm doing my own thing and it's very inspiring and rewarding. Uh, so, uh, basically, that, that that's how I did. And th this is how my games look uh, looks, like, looks like. I will show you it in more details when I show you a demo. But basically, this is a puzzle adventure, a quest, you know. I, I don't know how you call it. Uh, because actually that, that's a fun story. Uh, I already also applied for another gaming conference and they sort of like told me we cannot uh, approve you because uh, you call your game a quest and this is not like an industry term. Okay, no worries. Actually, they sent me then uh, an invitation that I accept that I think they don't have enough speakers. <laughs> so basically, this is how it looks like. It's like an interactive uh, storytelling, I would say. So you're basically moving around the map uh, you know the story, the plot, that there was some uh, mysterious robbery. And then you go through different locations through the map, see some uh, NPCs, you can talk to them, you can get some info. After you get some info, some other dialogues open. And basically you go through the story by getting more and more information and finally resolving the case. So, um, how, how to do a game? Uh, this is not like game Bible. This is what I learned by myself. Uh, Googled, you know, read some books. So uh, it's it's what I used in my game. I don't know, maybe there can be some more, but I will share you my experience. So maybe uh, this this will be better. So basically, I, first of all, idea, what, what is your game is about? And in here, I think this should be something you are passionate about because like, well, uh, I don't know, maybe now there are third person shooters, very uh, popular, modern warfare, war warfare. But why would you do a game about that if you don't like blood and gore, for example? Maybe you like fairies. So uh, nobody buys fairy games, I don't know. But why not buy uh, create a game if you, that you're passionate about? So maybe they will finally start buying fairy games. So then the plot. So this is more like a screenplay. So this to understand what are the events, what's their consequence, and so on. Then game mechan mechanics. So what would you have like fights? Would you have a health bar? Would you have inventory? How you progress through levels? Would there be any levels at all? So basically, what what's the key thing? They talk to each other, they kill each other. So basically that thing. Then basically, especially in my thing, because it's more like in interactive um, narrative, texts are super important. So you, you have to write a lot of text and of course localize them. Then art, of course, naturally, sound. Of course, some code, and I will talk a bit more about that. Play test, so you need somebody to test it. And of course, like you need to operate that project, product management, BDSM. I don't know if you, uh, in Ukraine, we call it BDSM. It's business development, sales marketing, not what you thought. So um, the first thing, so we'll go th quickly through, through each uh, stage. So the first thing is that you need to think of the setting. So basically setting is... Um, like a world uh, or the, or some events or some uh, outer things that w where everything happens. So basically characters are the who, so who's there, why they are there, and the plot is actually what happens. And you just basically jump around from rows three, starting from one to another and back and forth. So basically that's how the story starts evolving. So you just think, okay, so this is kind of character, what's his problem, what will he do? And what a kind of in in what kind of setting? Uh, then evolution of idea. Um, so basically, when I started doing my detective story, I thought, okay, so detectives Sherlock Holmes, I don't know, Lieutenant Colombo, Agatha Christie, uh, what what those guys are? They're like super, usually super smart, intelligent, uh, you know, like uh, dandy like. So I thought, okay, uh, I should not make another Sherlock Holmes. 
I should make an opposite guy. So I thought, how can I make a detective guy, a personage that would be appealing, interesting? So I thought that, okay, why not make a detective story about a junior security guard from a supermarket? So who's the worst person to, to find uh, criminals? Definitely him, because you know he knows nothing about criminal investigations. He's n unlike Sherlock Holmes, doesn't use the, like, you know, this uh, hypothetic th uh, language. So he's just a regular guy, like you know, like you, that you meet in a local supermarket. But because of that, it's kind of guy with a flaw. So we can, mm, I don't know, emotionalize to him. So it's um, like a person whom you can easily imagine. Then when I started evolving this idea, I understood that why not target this game to computer geeks? I, I don't know why, why I decided that, but I thought they play a lot. So the second evolution of him was a some compute supermarket security guard who sort of like finished online course of uh, QA manual testing and uh, wanted to become a QA engineer to switch into IT from the <laughs> security guardian's but he couldn't. So the fun part about that plot is that this computer, uh, this sorry, security guard would use a lot of uh, words from IT world, a lot of uh, jar jargons. So like, you know, so, so he would say like, okay, I used to find criminals, but now I'm uh, learning how to find bugs, which is more or less the same. So I will use it uh, as one thing. And then actually it evolved. So now, I actually have two different uh, main characters for those two different games because now the second one is not a supermarket security guard anymore. So he's just a QA engineer who was laid off because artificial intelligence uh, sort of like substituted him. So main point in here, be ready to be super flexible uh, even with the core things because like, you know, well, main character, what can be the most fundamental for your game. But, uh, you know, it, time flies, it evolves. So basically, I decided to make two separate games. So one is indeed about the su supermarket security guard as a detective. And the second one is about QA engineer as a detective. A dramatic structure. So this is like the super theory, like, you know, that you learned in schools. The most uh, uh, important thing here is the rise of events so computer games are usually only about rise so like uh, of course they have all these elements but 90 percent of computer game um, takes place here so these are levels these are boss fights the, this is like a right uh, evolution of events and this is the final boss fight let's say or when everything sort of like comes to the climate uh, climax and that resolute so it's like i know five percent of the game so basically Remember to have all this classical structure or make up a new one, but I think this is for now the best what humanity could do when they try, you know, to catch your attention. Uh, but be sure to be focused on the rise. Okay, uh, so this is a fun thing when I researched, so actually I thought, okay, so I will have a detective game, so I need some kind of uh, detective crime, okay? So did somebody kill one, somebody? Did, they, did somebody stole something? So I thought, okay, what can I come up with? So, and actually I found that there are 36 dramatic situations that were created by this French guy, my God, in 1895, and nobody beat him. So can you imagine in the whole world, there are only 36 dramatic situations. So if you tell me that somebody stole your dog, it would be like number, I don't know, 12. Uh, if somebody says uh, he was robbed, it would be number 18. Can you imagine that? I mean, it was super fun, you know, to try to look at that. And basically, uh, if you try to, you know, to browse through it, word love, I counted it, uh, is like 10 times over here. So mostly dramatic situations, like every third one of three dramatic situations is because of love. Well, I think it's pretty natural. So basically, this can be, there's a book about it. And basically, if you're, you know, you run out of ideas, especially for some quests or mini quests. My God, there are like, you know, million of ideas. So the uh, another thing that drives the story is conflict. Uh, they, the more conflicts you have, the better, the spicier they are, the better. And they can be, how to say it, they can be aligned into different vectors. So first, inner conflict. So in my case, this is a guy 
who works as a security guard in a supermarket, you know, really lousy job. He wants to quit it, but he thinks, okay, he has uh, to pay his rent. He doesn't think he's good enough uh, for making, like, you know, a better job. So this is his in inter inner thing. So he's doubtful of himself. External. So, like, he has a girlfriend. He's uh, uh, saying, like, you know... Um, they they always have fights because he earns way because his salary is too low, you know, and that's the external conflict. So with the close ones, this in the case of the girlfriend, this can be this as well. And with the world, with society, so maybe you know he wants to create some uh, some I don't know invention or anything, but society doesn't uh, get there. So be sure to have more 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 of this. Uh, and screenplay uh, play tips. So first, don't let players get what they want that easy i mean you know if they saw that okay so after this door there's this script with all the answers so they open the door but this there is only half of that script ah okay but at least we have the half then we go we find the other half we compose it ah it's i don't know in japanese so it's sort of like you need to always like um, show them the bait but always uh, not give the full size of it to them. Uh, then, uh, I don't know, this is, I think, a Greek word, uh, peripetia. So this is something that um, happens, some, um, um, some event, some uh, unfaithful event that changes the whole thing. So everything was good, but then, I don't know, um, <laughs> COVID happens and, uh, you know, successful business is uh, bankrupt. So, uh, so this is uh, next one. Raise the stakes. So, but this is like you know you, you can see in almost in any game. Uh, so that the guys with whom you fight, their level and uh, grows, and they become more and more strong. So because it's interesting, because if they would be um, weak all the time, it wouldn't be interesting for you to uh, to continue playing hooks. So this is something that you know you promise, like a promise, and then the person is interested in you know resolving that because you gave him that promise. And in my case, it's what I called aha and haha moments. So, because it's my detective isn't like an ironic detective with with a humor. So uh, I want to make sure that at this point they will laugh, and at this point they like will solve the riddle and say haha, like uh, I got it. Uh, wh 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 how how clever am I? So I mean, by mm, mixing those positive feelings, uh, you get players addicted to the game, basically. Uh, characters. So basically, there are main, as I think, three things. So first, they should be realistic. What is realistic? It's they're not. They should not be ideal. They should have their desires. So something that they want, but they cannot get because of their weakness. So, for example, the security guard. He thinks he can be an I don't know IT guy, but uh, he doesn't uh, have enough persistence to read enough books or watch uh, online videos to become a QA guy. And the need. Uh, he has to pay his rent at the end of the month. Uh, he wants to buy his uh, girlfriend some flowers. I don't know. So he needs that. Uh, they should be a bit hyperbolized. Yeah, you know, they should... Um, like, you know, if, it, if it's a French guy, so I, I usually make a very strong French accent. So, you know, it's even hyperbolized. So people don't speak like that in real life. But for a game, because you cannot uh, unfold the character, like, you know, for using 50... Uh, 50 pages, so you use the most uh, hyperbolized sites. And memorable, of, of course, so they should... Uh, uh, if you have a lot of uh, personages, so my game has like 38 uh, characters, so the guys need to remember who is who. Uh, texts. Uh, this is Notion. I used it for, for, for keeping text uh, there in Ukrainian. Uh, of course, because I started as a Ukrainian, then, then we translated the game into English. Uh, so I use uh, Google Bard and uh, ChatGPT to rephrase it. Uh, you know, so I mean, I, I like to write. So I, I think I'm good at copywriting. So for me, it's quite easy. But I use these uh, tools, for example, to rephrase it as. So for example, in ChatGPT, I'm asking him, please rephrase this in a more informal way, or like. Uh, with a human touch. And then I have some options which I can use. I mean, it's super fast and super and for free, especially for localization, because I know I'm not a native speaker, and uh, this really helps me. Uh, Ludwig Guru, this is a very good uh, tool to, uh, to 
uh, proofread English uh, like a local is great. And Notion, this is actually a tool that's like, you know, I mean, it's like an Google Sheets, uh, Google Docs, uh, Google Slides and everything over there. So, I mean, it's very convenient to keep a track of uh, multiple content types. Uh, sound. Uh, actually, over here, I, I wanted to add the photo of me and my wife uh, remaking a wardrobe uh, to our sound studio. So we used iPhone uh, uh, in a wardrobe. It's like, you know, we have to put pillows over there so it uh, consumes like extra sound. And we just used uh, I voiceover on, on iPhone to make a voiceover of all the characters that we had. Uh, it was super uh, cheap. Then second, AI. Uh, I'm not uh, still not using it for the um, voiceovers because I think they don't sound uh, really human-like, but they do sound way better than a year ago. So I think next year they would be fantastic. And it costs like, I don't know, 20 bucks a month. And Fever, this is like um, a marketplace where you have voice all over actors that you actually pay money and they do voiceovers. And if you don't need like a superstar in voiceover, but you just need the guy, you know, with a nice voice or a girl, there are a lot of new accounts. So people to promote them, they say like, okay, I am ready to voice over 300 words for 10 bucks. My God, 300 words is like, I mean, it's half a page for 10 bucks. So, I mean, th uh, these are like, you know, the rug techniques where you can find a way to, to compose your game a bit cheaper. Art. Well, uh, first, if I told you this, uh, if I showed you this slide last year, the first one be, would be search for photo stock packs. This is uh, how I got the art for my first game. I paid like $100 for an illustrator who had already a pack of 60 characters. So I just used Photoshop, you know, to mix them a bit, uh, which was a great price. Um, but of course, I had to do a lot of work with Photoshop. Uh, then ideally, if you have more money, you should hire Illustrator. Uh, but now, AI, I use Midjourney, 30 bucks uh, per month. Uh, I will show you what it does. I mean, pfft, it's fantastic. Uh, not always. Uh, these are some of uh, its uh, masterpieces, as I call them. So I don't know what's happened with the hands of this guy, um, but he looks okay. And you know, this is the prompt. So this is the name of the artist. So I, I use the artist name to s emulate his genre. And then portrait of a pretty nine-year-old girl in a summer dress, black and white cartoon style. Hmm. Okay, so it, it happens sometimes, but uh, I mean, it's just a joke, but uh, I re-rolled 2,500 images and generated 70, 70 that uh, I put into my game. So it, it took me like two weeks, I think, but it was a super fun. Okay, and this is the practical part. So we have like uh, half an hour. So um, I will now show you my game. Uh, so actually, this is uh, like the second part of the game. Okay. Windows computer, challenging. Okay, how do I open this? Oh, okay, yes. Good, so this is the interface of this Twine engine. So it's completely free, it's open source, it's being constantly developed, and it's HTML slash CSS and JavaScript base. For you girls, mm, this is not the hardest programming language I would say to use because you know those words. Uh, so you know the difference even between Java and JavaScript, right? Good. Okay, so basically uh, I will show you the game uh, first. So this is uh, like a new game that I'm working. This is a detective case about leaked nudes. So the story is like, you know, in a IT company office, a recruiter has a real problem because her nudes was leaked. Somebody uh, sort of like cracked her uh, iCloud account and they were gone. So let me see uh, if you can hear my sound. True story. Yeah. Holy guacamole. I don't know what that was, but I think you heard it. Okay, so let's start. So basically you approach the office printer 
to grab your reports and notice someone else recent printouts there. You set them aside and take a random look at what's been printed. It's a photo of your recruiter Nora, but it's not a usual office stuff. It looks like something from OnlyFans. Before you can fully recover from the shock, Nora herself rushes up to the printer. So let's raise our jaw and awkwardly say hi. Oh my goodness! Give it back to me! How embarrassing! But it's, same. <gasps> but it's not what you think. Oh, give me a second. I'll explain everything. Ooh, these photos don't mean I'm a pervert. It's an act of protest. I'm an animal rights activist. And we were planning a campaign to support homeless dogs. So to attract attention, the girls from our center took nude photos. Of course, faces would be blurred. But a few days ago... Someone hacked my account and got access to all the photos. <gasps> Later, I received a message from the bastards that they have my photos and that I should... A moment ago, they sent me a new email saying that I should come to a copying machine and pick up a surprise. Ah, oh, looks like you were here a bit earlier. I don't understand who is doing it and why. You've got a sharp mind. Please help me figure this out. If these photos get leaked, I can bear it. But my father, you know, he is a public person. This will be a real blow for him. It must be someone from the office. Otherwise, how would they have gained access to the printer? So basically, that was like two and a half minutes of the intro to the game. As I said, my wife was voiceovering this one. So, okay, guys, so let's play. Uh, let's go to the lounge zone. Okay, so here we are in our local Bermuda Triangle. Ping pong table, Xbox, and a vending machine. And a lonely printer standing a bit aside. So there's a recruiter, we already talked to her. And there's a printer, we can take a closer look. I suggest we do that. Okay, so it's a high-tech printer where you secretly printed your manga comics, okay. So we can enter the password, it's five digits. Um, I don't know, any guesses? Five zeros, let's do that. I don't know, it's like five or six. No, it's incorrect. Okay, I, I will just tell you that no, it's not. So basically I think we, uh, but we have inventory. Maybe let's check it. Okay, so those are the news. Ah, oh, stop gazing, sorry guys. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's get back to the lounge, I guess. Mm, nothing new here. So we can go to the map. Aha, uh -huh. and we already have some uh, some sweet spots in here. Mm, I don't know, where do you think we should go? I think after we saw this news, we can go, you know, to a smoking room to have a cigarette or two, but we don't have that location, unfortunately. So what do you say? Where do we go? Exactly, let's do that. So there's a system administrator, and we can talk to him. Okay. Uh, it's a, your office, undisputable champion of bullshit bingo. Oh, good. So let, uh, let's ask him to remind how the office printer works. I've explained it to you a hundred times. Each employee has their own ID and password. Once you log in, you can see your recent print job and launch, and launch a new one. It's all straightforward, Kuba. Distracting me, you'd better tell me how to to checkmate our devops because i've been chasing him for the last 20 minutes we help him with his uh, chess game he can um, give us the id list okay so the guy is uh, is uh, playing chess with somebody and we can help him to put checkmate in one move with white to blacks uh, any ideas uh, how we should uh, move? So you can just tell me, like, you know, the, the, the number of squares. Yeah, not many Kasparovs in this room, I guess. King to B2. So this one, this one is not, not the king, this is a queen, the strongest figure. The black one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In one move. Yes, my friend. A2, queen. 
G8. Let's try that. Wa wa wi wa. Yes, we did it. So basically, at this point, I will stop because that's how it actually goes. So if we talk to him, whoa. a list of employers ids so now we know we, we know which are the um which are the ids of the logs of the whole employers list and then we'll like you know we'll go find some other things and finally we we can crack this thing uh now i will show you the back end side so this is basically what it can do so we can have timer we can have inventory we can have some money we can have a log of dialogues we can have map uh and actually way more. We can have inventory, money, uh, health points. There can be a combat system within this, this particular uh, tool. And I will now show you how it works. So this is how it, uh, how it looks like. So this is a map that we were uh, using. So basically now we have some code in here. So as you can see, so for example, there's uh, there was a, a water closet. So basically, it's uh, it's uh, coordinates where it is, uh, uh, it's its name, and basically what we can do. I will just show you. We can uh, add here a new passage. So let's do this. So passage is this block that can be anything. So let's I don't know. Let's uh, say that this is I don't know, uh, smoking room. Uh, now we can go to this. Uh, this is a map that's already preset. So and let's what no. Let me do. Let me just copy the preset uh, previous uh, code that I used. It, it's all it, like you know. You can have these presets online. I mean, there's a huge manual about this tool Twine. It's called Twine. So uh, this would be smoking. And in here, the passage, it would lead to, just give me a second, smoking room. So let us uh, double check if it works. Hopefully it is. Oh, sorry, build. Yeah. Okay, so we start the game once again. Uh, it works as play pause, so we don't just don't do it. Okay, uh, it's here. It's smoking room. I just forgot to change the coordinates because in here we had the director's office, but you can see that it's already changed. And if I go in here, because the passage was blank, we, ho we have nothing here. But basically, uh, you can use passage. So in here, smoking room. So you can add like uh, images, sound over here, text. So if I uh, print hello here, so we will actually see... So just yeah, so it says hello. So as easy, as super easy as that. Uh, I mean, and you can uh, host it. A uh, first version, I I hosted it on my Dropbox, so I didn't even pay for hosting. So I mean, the uh, of course we're not calculating the time that we used uh, for, to develop this game, but uh, in terms of cost, it was like less than five hundred dollars to create a game. So uh, that's super easy, and the, in terms of like uh, uh, people, so I don't know. Let's uh, shall I just do a small director's office? Uh, okay, so we have so this is um, the uh, dialogues with the director. So I already have it in here, it's both in Ukrainian and English. So let's see. I don't know. We can say uh, it was here. Say hello. Let's uh, I don't know. Uh, raise my salary let's do that always wanted to do that and uh, let me cha change what he uh, tells me absolutely and here is your bonus and in here we can use some uh, variables there's also a preset of them so you can just read how to write it because I didn't know how to write it. So uh, set be like this cash to cash plus ten thousand. Let me double check. Uh, uh huh. Cash with H. Yeah, because it will do something else. Set cash. Well, I'm not used to this. To 
to cache what I think like this. Let me just double check on my on my notes because I always forget about this code, you know. Set cache to cache. Uh -huh, okay, it's over here. So you see, even such a person, uh, such a humanitarian person as I can do it almost. Okay, let me see if no space bars in here. Okay, so let's let's hope uh, let's hope it works. Let's check it. Play. Start. Go to launch zone. Directory sitting at. <laughs> now you see we cannot go to the director's office because uh, we closed it with the smoking room. It happens all the time. I will just do it right here. Smoking room. Where it is? Smoking. We just deleted. Okay. Good. Just a second. We're we're like second away from ten thousand bucks. Hopefully, director's office. Talk. Raise my salary, you. Oh. Well, uh, because it, it's the voiceover is different because we, we, we didn't uh, align it. But okay, I'm going back. Yay! 10,000 bucks. That's what you call game development, my friends. So basically, that's how it works. I mean, it's super easy. And because, I, as I said, there's a huge library of different preset codes that you can use. So going back to my presentation, I'm on the finish line. Uh, there. So this is the website, twinary.org. Uh, slideshow. Why am I putting that over here? Okay, good. So uh, <laughs> if you like this engine, you can uh, take a photo of this uh, slide uh, because those are great examples. And this first game, 80 days, uh, it was called by time the game of the year in 2017, let's say. So I mean, even guys using that engine uh, do, of course, it's not a triple A, but I mean, it's a, it's a game that made a lot of money. And oh, to the right, you can see that you can really customize the art and everything. So it could look really different and it could look uh, like really appealing. Uh, play tests. So basically, uh, those are my parents. They are over 60. And uh, I thought that, okay, if they understand how to play my game, then anybody can play my game. So we did uh, some play tests to, of course, to check the logic, bugs, uh, the complexity of riddles, uh, game duration, and of course, emotion. So, you know, you always track, okay, so do you think it's funny for them or not? So, so it's, it's, it's really important to check that. And uh, uh, basically what, what's happened, uh, what's happened? So this is the, the uh, final slide. Uh, what happened? So I thought of creating a single player game and release it on Steam, naturally. Uh, but then, because I was involved in uh, working in IT companies, uh, in the middle of COVID, um, some of my HR colleagues, uh, they told me, uh, you know, we have this huge problem. We have budgets to put people together and to entertain them somehow. You know, going to bowling, karting, having some pizzas. But in the middle in the, of the COVID, you cannot do that. So how can we entertain our people? And I thought, why not playing together? this detective game, you know, like, not like a single player, but, uh, I don't know, having a Zoom call, so let's imagine like five of us, we create a Zoom call, then one of us shares our screen, uh, his screen, and basically we're playing that game like we did it all together. So we vote to which locations go, to which uh, characters to talk to, and it became like a separate product. So I have not, like, it's it's been a year and a half that I'm developing that game. And I have not released it on Steam yet, but I already sold, like, I don't know, to over 1,500 people in terms of companies. So I have, like, 70 clients from, like, IT companies that say, okay, Ilya, uh, can you make us... Uh, can you host us a game for like 20 people? We have this product team, we, but they're like, you know, in different cities, in different countries. Uh, we want to play that game through Zoom. So basically, I sell it to them like $20 per person. So they, so like a, a team of 20 would pay me for $400. So it's like a separate B2B product, which actually became a play test for me. So it's like a play test for which I do not pay, but players pay me for it. So they... They play, they like it, but I myself take notes. How can I improve the game? And in the final, they pay me after two hours, $400, and I have my notes how to improve the game. So, I mean, uh, 
it, it looks it looks so weird. I hope, of course, to make like millions uh, uh, in Steam, but so far we generated like twenty five thousand dollars in the rev. So we already covered all of our costs uh, because for the second game it was higher, uh, and we already the profit is already like twenty five thousand dollars on this reverse place test, and we still haven't released it on Steam. So hopefully. I don't know. Next time uh, I come here, you see me, you know, with golden chains and riding a Bugatti like here, there. And I'm joking. Uh, good. And so some closing. Uh, so basically, this is about flexibility. You know what market needs. So I, I understood that there is a market need for like not a classic uh, sort of computer game, but like a B two B computer game. So it was an opportunity that I embraced, and I can do it in parallel. So I can. My my idea is, you know, to create some other stories. Uh, about these detective guys, test them on B2B, they will pay for it, and then I release it on Steam. Profit, hopefully. Okay, uh, so, uh, another thing, doing at least something is already an achievement. There this was a story about the uh, founder of SimCity game. Uh, I never heard it, so actually the uh, original idea that led to SimCity uh, game concept was that he wanted to create a game a simulator of a helicopter that would bombard the city. And when he started developing it, he understood that he needs to develop a city which this helicopter would, you know, sh shallow. And when he started developing the city, he liked it so much that initially he said, no, a game about helicopter bombarding a city is, uh, is shit. Let's just leave a game about building a city. And that's how uh, SimCity uh, emerged. So basically, if he did nothing at all, nothing would happen. Um, let the world know about your idea. You know, there's a lot of uh, this uh, secrecy, you know, oh, I have my super idea of this game, but I will not tell you because you will steal it. I think it's, uh, well, uh, I mean, uh, 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 everyone has their own truth, but I think as soon as you start talking about it, the world hears it and the world supports you. So basically, when I um, started telling my friends that I have this idea of creating a, um, a detective game, but I'm not into coding, so I don't know which uh, environment to use, which programming languages to, to use. So I started talking to my like friends uh, from IT, and there was a guy who told me, you know, there is this soft called Twine, the one that I showed you, and he said, take, take a look at it. And the idea was the following. He needed to, to download, like, for his work job, he needed to download some some library or something, and it was called Twide, uh, and he mistyped it, and therefore he entered the website called Twine. He downloaded the thing, started playing with it, understood that it's not something that he needed, but for whatever reason, it um, captured his mind. So when I asked him about something like that, he actually recalled this idea and told me. So basically, and it was our backend. So I thought like, you know, uh, hiring a backend engineer and paying him like $5,000 per month. And then we have this open source solution for like $0 just because I was talking about my idea, spreading the word. And somebody told me, okay, so I know this this for you. And um, uh, the, the very last thing, um, I don't know, maybe it's like a more philosophical, you know, be, because uh, I myself like being like an indie developer, uh, identify myself as a um, Swiss knife. You know, I can draw, I can do voiceover, I can do programming, uh, I can do game design, I can do like anything. But I have only 24 hours a day and at least eight of them I need to sleep. And when you try to do all by yourself, it's not that good. Because usually you're very strong at one thing, and uh, that's what you should focus. So this is like, you know, a metaphor of a puzzle piece. You just need to identify into which picture. So imagine yourself as a puzzle piece. It's maybe rounded, it may be square. Uh, it may be not ideal, but it's uh, and it may not, it will definitely not fit into different puzzle pictures. But if you manage to find your puzzle picture was missing like this piece and you put it there, it, you would be happy. I mean, and, and of course successful. Uh, which I think is um, synonyms. Good, so this is the last slide. This is um, a QR code to my website if you want to check it out. So uh, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, 
And yeah, go there and chase your dreams. Do computer games uh, if you want to. If not, don't do them, but be happy and uh, make the others happy as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Somebody have the questions? They already started doing the game. They don't have time for questions. Yeah. And I want to ask you about... The, you told it you use ChatGPT and... Google Bard, and, yeah. And Google Bard. And it's helpful you and you uh, create uh, some screen scripts very fast. Yeah, like. So uh, those two... Oh, thanks for the question. Those two... Mm, guys, they are helpful as assistants. So, for example, they cannot make a plot for the game, as far as I think. I, I really tried. But, for example, I have this uh, twist in the plot. So, let's say I need to come up with a, a side quest. Uh, in this, for example, in the office. So, I'm, like, writing a context, saying, okay, uh, we have a guy uh, who is a system administrator, and uh, I need some quest to help him with something so he can give me the list of IDs of employees. What can be your suggestions of how can I help him? And he says, okay, so for example, he lost his phone. I don't know. He needs to make a name for his dog. He cannot win somebody in a chess game. So, I mean, it would put you like 10 uh, different ideas and then you think, oh, chess game. That That's exactly what I need. I mean, so it's more like I would say like an assistant to whom you can um, address uh, to like to Google to challenge. So it cannot, I think, for now, it cannot make a plot. This is your core competence. This is your creativity. But it can definitely help you to expand it, to prove it. You know, when I'm out of ideas, I just say make a list of ten crazy ideas what uh, robbery could happen in uh, IT office. And he's like, somebody stole sandwich. Somebody stole like the new prototype of iPhone. And uh, a lot can be really stupid, but even a stupid idea can think, oh, I thought somebody could steal somebody's nudes. So it wasn't his idea, but I made it made me think about it. So, I, I mean, I definitely recommend uh, using it. And of course, if uh, talking about localization, I do uh, like all the text, I give them to the translation agency. They gave me back the translations and I also put them like, you know, rephrase them like a native speaker. So definitely suggest trying. Thank you, Leon. Good. Thank you, guys. Thank you.